Okay, it's already past one o'clock. No? So let me start by asking, are there any questions with regard to any of the material that has so far been presented? Any questions? There's a question um, for the solutions for week one quiz problem set. Are we only are we only allowed to use concept discussed for that week? Uh, yes, you know, I would I would suggest you you only use concepts allowed for that week because this is supposed to be the basics. You know? So you're not supposed to jump to any of the shortcut methods. Okay, so for those of you that may not know it yet, yung problem set released na namin this morning at 8 a.m. We released it by email because we weren't sure whether Uble would uh, come up again. Uh, so, kailan ba Ju yun? Nakalimutan ko tuloy. Uh, Yeah, the pro the problem sets the problem set for week one is due on March sixteen, so you have approximately uh, six days to do it. A uh, seven, no, seven days to do it. One week to do it. And then your quiz, the quiz has been opened up again. And uh, it, it, it is going to be open until March 12 at 12 noon. Maybe I should put that in the chat box. No?
Okay, I might as well start the lecture, no? Since wala naman nung, uh, there are no questions that are being asked. Last chance for any questions before I start the lecture. So that uh, we get the chance to finish earlier to just in case. Okay, so the the past week, what did we do? No, we studied basic circuit quantities. So we we studied charge, which is the fundamental, the most fundamental circuit quantity. Then when there are charges that are moving, that is a current, no? Char charges in motion. Then we studied how the energy that is uh, that is imparted on a charge will depend on its position with other charges. And we, we discussed difference in energy or difference in potential as voltage. So voltage is energy per unit charge. Okay. And then we related energy uh, current and voltage, we related current and voltage to power and eventually to energy. So yun yung apat na importante quantity uh, right now that you should be very, very familiar with. Current, voltage, power, and energy. Okay, okay and then uh, we took up uh, the two fundamental circuit laws. No? One is uh, Kirchhoff's current law, which says that the algebraic sum of currents departing from a node or moving away from a node is equal to zero. And then we also took up Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that the algebraic sum of uh, potential differences or voltages traversing a path, a closed path in a given direction is also equal to zero. Okay. Kirchhoff's current law is true because Charges cannot accumulate. So whatever charge is coming in should be leaving. And Kirchhoff's voltage law is true because there has to be conservation of energy. If, you're, if you start and you got, come back to where you started from, then the total energy gain should be equal to the total energy that is lost. Yeah. Okay, um, at this point, Knowing Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, you can actually solve circuit problems already. In fact, your, your uh, problem set actually entails you to do that. No? But right now, the way you are solving circuit problems is very unstructured. So pag, pag gagawin niyo yung problem set na inassign sa inyo, the way you know how to do it is very unstructured. What you do is you just try to form uh, whatever equations you can, no? using Kirchhoff's current law or using Kirchhoff's voltage law, and then solving those equations uh, simultaneously. So starting with this week, we're going to take up circuit analysis techniques. So this is the summary of uh, my lecture this afternoon. First, we're going to take up the principle of equivalence then we're going to take up circuit simplification. For circuit simplification, there are four particular cases which we will take up. Resistors in series, resistors in parallel, sources in series, and sources in parallel. These are not the only circuit simplification techniques. There are other techniques that you're going to learn in your future courses. And then we'll take up the principle of voltage division and the principle of current division. Okay, so let me start with equivalence. Ano ang definition ng equivalence? Two electric circuits are said to be equivalent with respect to a pair of terminals. If at these terminals, identical currents flow when identical voltages are applied. Let's say I have two circuits, circuit one and circuit two. I apply a voltage V1 at circuit one, I expect the current I want to flow. I apply a voltage V2 at circuit two, I expect a current I2 to flow. Now if the voltage I applied at circuit one and circuit two are equal, and if I get the same current I1 equal to I2, then with respect to terminals A, B, and X, Y, circuit one and circuit two are equivalent, no? Ulit, ano? 
if V1 is equal to V2, that is the voltages that I applied are equal, and I1 is equal to I2, this, the currents that result from these applied voltages are equal, then with respect to terminals A, B, and X, Y, circuit one and circuit two are equivalent. Okay, what is, what is the significance of the two circuits being equivalent? Okay, let me... Okay, let's say I had a third circuit, no? Let's say I had the third circuit. Circuit three. Okay. From the perspective of a third circuit, if I connect circuit one, no, or I connect circuit two, I should have tried it this way, no? Okay, from the perspective of a third circuit, so let's call this circuit three. This will not know the difference, will not be able to distinguish whether it is circuit one or circuit two connected to it. So ito ikakabit ko rito, this I connect to that, that I connect to that, okay? There, there's a certain response. This I connect to this, this I connect to this, it will get exactly the same response. It will not be able to distinguish whether it is circuit one or circuit two that is connected to it. So that's, that is equivalence, okay? That is equivalence. So parang, parang uh, ikaw yan, ano? Um, let's, say, let's say you, I'm just trying to make an analogy here, no? Let's say you, you hold, you're blindfolded, you hold the hands of one friend, no? So hawakan niyo yung kamay ng isang kaibigan. Then you hold the hands of another friend. If you cannot distinguish between one friend and the other friend, then your two friends, quote unquote, are equivalent with respect to their hands. So, parang ganun yung concept no? That's that's uh, that, that's the that's how I would describe the concept. Okay. Circuit simplification makes use of the principle of equivalence. This is performed when interested in a few unknowns in a circuit. So kung konti lang yung unknown na kailangan natin i-compute sa isang circuito, we can use the principle of equivalence. The technique is to transform a portion of the circuit into a simpler equivalent circuit while preserving the unknown quantities to be determined. This is very important. While preserving the unknown quantities to be determined. The simpler circuit makes it easier to compute for the desired quantities. So this is the principle of circuit simplification. And there are certain structures, we're talking about resistance, resistors, there are certain structures that right away you can recognize as being, ab uh, being able to simplify it. For example, sample, when you have resistances in series. So here on the left side, I have N resistances in series. I maintain that with respect to terminals A and B, I can replace all of those resistances with just one equivalent resistance, where the equivalent resistance is just the sum of all of the individual resistances. And this is very, very, very easy to prove. Because if I have a voltage here, let's say this is V, okay, a certain current I results, okay, V is equal to VR1 
plus VR2 plus VR3 all the way to VRN. But what is VR1? VR1 is I times R1. VR2 is I times R2. VI3 is I times R3 all the way to I times Rn, which is I times R1 plus R2 all the way to Rn. If this is equivalent to this, that means if I apply the same voltage V, I will get exactly the same current I. No? But if I take a look at the circuit on the right, the circuit on the right, V is equal to I times REQ. No? So this is the same as this. No? And this is the same as this. Therefore, ito must be equal to this. No? Because your V is the same and your I is the same. So the, the proof is very, very simple. Now, when are two elements in series? So I already mentioned that uh, um, last week. Two elements are in series if at their point of interconnection, there is nothing else that is connected. No? So uh, let me just use a box. No? So this is one and two. One and two are in series if at this point, nothing else is connected. The moment you have something else connected here, that is no longer in series. So hindi na yan, hindi na yan in series. Dapat dun sa point of connection nila, silang dalawa lang yung nakakabit. Wala nang iba. Okay, so that is your first rule for circuit simplification. Okay, what about resistances in parallel? Okay. So the circuit on the left is equivalent to the circuit on the right if 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 all the way to plus 1 over Rn. And again, this is uh, quite easy to to prove. Okay. So the same, the, the proof we can we can do is the same. No? Um, let's say we apply a voltage here, plus or minus V, we are going to get a current I. Okay. Now what is I equal to? I is equal to, let's call this I1, let's call this I2, let's call this I3, all the way to I n. So applying KCL, I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 all the way to plus I n. <clears throat> now notice that the voltage across all of these resistors are the same. The voltage across all of these resistors is equal to V. So what is I1? I1 is just V over R1. I2 is V over R2. V over R3, all the way to V over Rn. So this is equal to V times one over R1 plus one over R2, all the way to one over Rn. No? Now here on the right side, I do the same thing. I apply V. I get a current I. I is equal to V times one over R equivalent. Okay. So if this I is equal to this I, and if this V is equal to this V, then this must be equal to this. That must be equal. So that is what is said in this particular expression. Okay, recall what is one over R? One over R is equal to G. So 
itong expression na to, this is like saying G equivalent is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G3 all the way to plus Gn. So this is in terms of R and this is in terms of G. Now, special case, when you have two resistors in parallel, so kung dalawa yung resistor mo, the equivalent resistance is the product over the sum. No? So this is product over the sum. Okay. When you have two equal resistances in parallel, the equivalent resistance is just one half of one of, of one of the resistors. No? So pag, pag meron akong dalawang 10 ohm in parallel, the equivalent resistance will be one half, which is five ohm. And the equivalent resistance, okay, the equivalent resistance is always smaller than either of the resistances. So our equivalent here, our equivalent will be less than R1 and will also be less than R2. Okay. Hindi pwedeng mas malaki yung equivalent resistance dun sa isa sa mga, dun sa pinaka, ano, no? Hindi pwedeng mas malaki dun sa pinakamaliit na resistor that is in parallel. In other words, my equivalent resistance will be less than the smallest resistor of all of these resistances in parallel. Okay, I have a question for you. No? Answer through the chat. Okay. What is the equivalent resistance of this? R in parallel with a short circuit. What is R equivalent? Okay. Isa lang yung sumagot? <laughs> okay, that's right, no? From... Well, uh... Yeah, the answer is zero. Our equivalent is equal to zero. Okay, why? No. This is a resistance equal to zero. A short circuit, a short circuit is a resistance that is equal to zero. Okay, therefore, if I follow this formula, if either R1 or R2 is equal to zero, then our equivalent is equal to zero. So if you see if you see anything like this, pag may nakita ko yung ganyan, automatically the equivalent resistance is just equal to a short. No? Anytime you see a resistor shorted out, you can take that resistor out. The equivalent resistance will always be equal to a short. Okay? So that's also part of circuit simplification. When you see something that is shorted, then you can remove that. No, it doesn't matter. No, it's not going to change the performance of your circuit. Okay. Now, when are two elements in parallel? And I, I also already discussed this. No? First of all, they are in parallel. For them to be in parallel, okay, they must be connected at both their terminals. So this is one and two. One and two are parallel. They must be connected at both their terminals. Okay. If if there's another element here, this is not parallel. No, one and two are not parallel. Kasi para maging parallel sila, dapat nakabit sila rito, dapat ito at saka ito nakabit din. No? Pero merong sumingit dito. No? So one and two are not in parallel. Okay, okay so here's an example. Determine the voltage V 
by simplifying the circuit seen by the current source at terminals A and B. So again, no? this is an example of the um, common use of circuit simplification. I am only interested in one variable. Ito lang, no? Ito lang yung interest ko. Ano yung value nitong V na to? So what I want to do is, with respect to terminals A and B, I convert this to a simpler equivalent circuit. And because that is now a simpler equivalent circuit, it is now easier for me to compute the value of V. Now remember what I said. No? When you do circuit simplification, you must preserve you must preserve the quantity that you want to compute for. In other words, you must preserve this quantity. Okay, so let's let's work on this together. Okay, what is these two are in series? Okay, so if you if you get the series combination of these two, that's equal to a resistor that is equal to 16 ohms, right? So that 16 ohms is now in parallel with 64 ohms. The 16 ohms is in parallel with 64 ohms. So what is the parallel combination of 16 ohms and 64 ohms? So unfortunately, I don't have the answer. I have to compute. It's 12.8 ohms. No? Okay, thank you for the help, no? uh, Elijah. So this, this two together from here is 12.8 ohms. Now the 12.8 ohms is in series with a 7.2 ohm. So at this point, the 7.2 ohm and the 12.8 ohm will give you 20 ohms. Now the 20 ohms is in parallel with 30 ohms. So finally, with respect to A and B, no, ditto, with respect to this, looking into A and B, what am I going to see? I'm going to see 20 in parallel with 30, so that's... Uh, <laughs> that's 12 ohms that's right huh? that's 12 ohms here i'm going to see 12 ohms so what is my equivalent circuit now okay my equivalent circuit is i have a five ampere source and this is r equivalent which is equal to 12 ohms so what is the value of v V is simply equal to five times 12. So this is 60 volts. Okay. So how, see how, how much simpler it is now to compute for the value of V, okay. to compute for the value of V when you have reduced the circuit with respect to the terminals of V into a simpler equivalent circuit. So I have a question, no? Could I have used circuit simplification? So tanong ko na lang, no? Let us say the problem was compute for this V. No? Or compute for V1. No? Can I use circuit simplification. Okay, uh, I got an answer from someone, sabi niya no, no. Actually, uh, the correct answer is yes, but we don't know yet how to do it, no. We don't know yet how to do it because remember, when you use circuit simplification, you have to preserve this quantity. The minute I put the six ohms in series with 10 ohms and convert it to a single resistance, 
nawawala na yung V1 ko kasi nawala na yung 10 ohms ko eh. Nawala yung 10 ohms ko and therefore I am not preserving the quantity that I need that I need to uh, preserve when I use circuit simplification. So with when you use circuit simplification, you have to simplify with respect to the terminals whose quantity you want to compute for. So ang isi-simplify natin is ito. No? This is what we have to simplify. And you have to preserve, preserve terminals A and B. A and B should be preserved. Now, we don't know how to do that yet, especially since there is a current source here. Okay? But uh, in, 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 in the future, in the future of this course, you're going to learn how to do it. No? Uh, there's a question. Would it be feasible to use the original circuit after computing for V? Yes, it is, actually. But that's, that's no longer circuit simplification. So what, what we can do, we can simplify like, uh, like was suggested to compute for V. You know? And then after computing for V, you might find a way to compute for, for V1 subsequently. You know? But uh, we haven't also learned how to do that yet. Okay. Okay, so anyway, Ansagot uh, is 60 volts, no? Okay. Here's another example. Determine the equivalent resistance of the circuit with respect to terminals A and B. Okay, I'll, I'll give you guys five minutes. Try to solve this on your own. And then let's see who comes up with the correct answer. Okay, so give you five minutes. No? Try to solve it on your own. After after five minutes, you, you can no, no, you can post your answer in the chat box. Then after five minutes, we'll solve it together and we'll see who got the answer correctly. Please try it, ah. Huh? Um, baka naman, baka naman hindi nyo siyong subukan, di kayo matututo niya, no? So please try, please try solving the problem.
Na, nakakatakot ba ang tignan? Yes, you can solve this using series and parallel connections. You can solve this using series and parallel connections. So there are some concerns already coming out. No? So si Joshua, he did down niya magets kung saan magumpisa. <laughs> well, some some hints, no? some hints. Um, this point is the same as this point, right? So, as a hint, so that means that this is in parallel with this. So, isang hint chan. Okay. Uh, ang ang pinaka ang pinaka guide nyo is when doing circuit simplification, you have to preserve these two. You have to preserve these two terminals. No? Make sure that when you simplify, hindi mo wala itong dalawang terminal na yan. Okay. So there's already a... <laughs> There's an attempt by Justin, sabi niya, 4K ohms. We'll, we'll see later on if that's correct. There is no short circuit here. Okay. Let's let's try to do this together. No? Okay. So, madalas you're going to encounter things like this, ano, where you really have to recognize the topology of the circuit. Remember what I said earlier: if you have a wire, you can compress that wire to a single point, right? Not that if you have a point, you can compress that point into a into a uh, longer wire, no? Just, just make sure that everything that, that is uh, connected to it as a point is also connected to it as a wire. So yun yung trick ng topology. Okay, so what, what can we recognize from this circuit? Okay, uh, remember that this is point B, right? This is point B. So this wire, this wire can compress to a single point, therefore this is also point B. This is also point B. That is also point B, right? Now this is point A. If I follow this wire, this is also point A. Okay, and then let me call this point C. So actually in this circuit, I really only have three points, point A, point B, and point C. So, what is connected between A and B? What is connected between A and B? This is between A and B, right? So let me redraw it here. That is between A and B. So that is 4K. This is also between A and B, right? So that's another 4K. This is also between A and B. So that's another 4K. And finally, this is also between A and B. So that's another 4K, right? So notice that all the 4K resistors are actually in 
parallel. Okay, so this is still point A, no? This is still point B. Now, what is connected between A and C? Okay, and you connected between A and C. Let me use a different color. This is between A and C. So let me draw C here. Let me draw C here. So I have one K between A and C. This is also between A and C. So I have another one K between A and C. Now, are, is there something between B and C? Yes, there is something between B and C. This is between B and C. No? So that is another 1K. And this is also between B and C. So this is another 1K. Okay, ngayon na nakita nyo yan. Ngayon na nakita nyo yan. What is the resistance between A and B? Having seen that. Anyone? Sorry, it's not 0.2 ohms, no? Yeah. Okay, somebody got it, no? 500 ohms. 500 ohms. Or 0.5K is also correct. Okay? So the answer is 500 ohms. So actually, itong... Itong apat na 4K in parallel, the equivalent resistance, if you have four equal resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance is just one fourth, no? So this 4K in parallel, this is 1K. And then two 1Ks in parallel is 500 ohms. Two 1Ks in parallel is 500 ohms. The 500 in series with 500 is 1K. And then these two are in parallel. So this is 0.5K. So this is the answer. Okay. So again, it's just a matter of figuring out the circuit topology, right? Recognizing that uh, a wire can be compressed to a single point or a point can be stretched into a wire. Any questions with regard to this problem? Okay, so let's continue with um, let's continue with uh, circuit simplification. So the next thing we'll take up are sources in series. Let's say I have n voltage sources that are in series. Uh, sorry, there's something wrong with the figure here. No, this should be plus minus plus minus, plus minus, no? So let, let's say I have N voltage sources in series. With respect to terminals A and B, I can represent all those voltage sources with just one equivalent voltage source where the voltage source is V1 plus V2 plus V3 all the way to plus Vn. No? But you have to take note of the polarities. And that's, that's very easy to prove, no? All you have to do is we use KVL. No? If you use KVL, we go around this loop. You have VAB is equal to V1 plus V2 all the way to plus VN. No? On the other hand, if I have VAB here, VAB is equal to V equivalent. So if this is the same as this, then this must be equal to this. Okay, why did I say take note of the polarities? Okay, what if, for example, what if I had A and B? This is V1. Sabi natin minus plus yan V2. Minus plus V3. 
What is V equivalent? V equivalent will be V1 minus V2 minus V3, right? Because of the polarity of this. And it's, it's very easy to show that if you do a KVL, no? Because if you do a KVL, the AB is equal to V1, and then you're going from negative to plus, so it's going to be minus V2 and then minus V3. Okay, so take note of the polarities. Now, what about current sources in series? Current sources in series. If I have n current sources in series, first of all, the circuit will be invalid unless all of those currents are in are equal. It will be an invalid circuit unless all of the currents are equal. Because you cannot have more than one value of current flowing in a circuit. There can only be one value of current flowing in the circuit. So all of this have to be equal for the circuit to be valid. And the equivalent circuit is just the value of any one of the current sources. Okay, I hope you, I hope you underst understand that. What about sources in parallel? If you have voltage sources in parallel, okay, again, the circuit is invalid unless V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3, which is equal to Vn. All of these voltage sources would have to be equal. So this is, this is the case that I mentioned. Uh, I, I think I might have mentioned it last time, no? What will happen if you have two batteries, one is 12 volts, one is, let's say six volts, and you put them in parallel with each other. What will be the voltage across the terminals? So let's say I had two batteries with the 12 volts, with the six volts. What is the AB? What is VAB? No? Let's say this is A and this is B. Is VAB 12? Is VAB 6? If I did KVL this path, I'm going to get VAB is equal to 12. If I, get, if I do KVL this path, I'm going to get VAB is equal to 6. So obviously this is invalid. So all of these have to be equal. And your equivalent circuit is just the value of any one of those voltages. On the other hand, when you have current sources in parallel, so here I have n current sources in parallel, okay? My equivalent current source will just be the algebraic sum of all of the current sources taken together, no? Sorry of all of the current sources taken together. But again, take note of the current direction. Take note of the current direction. So for example, I'll, 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 I'll answer the questions uh, as soon as I finish this. No? If I have I1 this way, and I have I2 this way, okay, and I want this to be a single equivalent current, I equal equivalent. What is I equivalent? I equivalent will be I1 minus I2. No? That is what you're going to get when you do a KCL at this point. No, You're going to get I1 minus I2. Okay, I, I, I see some questions. Uh, what happens if you wire the invalid circuit in real life? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> no. um, what will happen is, uh, well, for example, ito, no? if you try to wire this in real life, then uh, this is going to try to charge up this. Well, to... to 
to to make to make a simpler answer internally no? internally there is an internal resistance inside inside the 12 volt source no so if i have a 12 volt source no? internally that is a resistor inside the volts no there's an internal resistance here. So this is actually the equivalent circuit of a real battery, of a real battery. So there's actually a resistor here and a resistor here. But that resistance is very, very small. Yeah. It's very, very small because uh, when you have a current flowing, the voltage drop across the resistor will be negligible. So you you almost always get 12 volts. So the, the difference in these two voltages will actually distribute between these two resistances if you actually wire it. But if you try to do this, if you try to wire this, one is going to supply a very, very huge current to the other. In this case, the 12 volt source will supply a very huge current to the six volt source. And you're going to feel your wires get very, very hot. In fact, So that's what will happen. But if we treat if we treat the voltage sources as a as an ideal sources, then we just say that the circuit is invalid. It is not it is not supposed to exist. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Okay. So anyway, just just for me to know whether you understand whether a circuit is valid or invalid. So let. Let me hear your answers in the chat box. No? Is circuit A valid or invalid? Okay, so everybody says valid. That's good. No? What about circuit B? Is that valid or invalid? Okay, good. It's valid. What about C? Is C valid or invalid? Okay, this time I have some, some say valid. I have a minority saying invalid. I, I don't know. I like it that you try to answer. That means you're thinking, no? Yung mga ayaw sumagot, are you afraid of making a mistake? You shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes, no? You should take the risk. Okay, this is valid. It's valid because there's no contradiction. All, all that this is saying is you have a 10 volt source that is applied across a current source or you have a current being forced through a 10 volt source. No? But there's nothing invalid. No? The, current, the current that will flow here is going to be five amperes. And then the voltage across your five ampere, uh, a five ampere current source will be 10 volts. But there's nothing invalid. There's nothing invalid there. Okay, what about letter D? Okay, very obvious, no? Letter D is invalid. So ito yung case na, na sinabi ko kanina. Okay. And obviously also letter E is also invalid. No? Because you have a single loop here. In other words, no? If I apply KCL at A, so for this particular circuit, KCL at A, what, what am I going to get? I'm going to get five amperes is equal to two amperes, which is, of course, impossible. That's applying KCL at this point, no? at that point. Five amperes is equal to two amperes. That's impossible. No? So this is also obviously invalid. Okay, okay. here's an example. For the circuit show, shown, what value of alpha is required for the circuit to be valid? Okay, this, this problem tests uh, your understanding of uh, valid and invalid circuits. It tests your understanding of um, dependent sources, okay? So let's, let's see. What value of alpha is required for the circuit to be valid? So I want to see some answers.
Uh, I haven't seen any correct answer yet. Okay, I saw a correct answer already. Ah, meron pala, sorry. I, I, I missed the answer of uh, Ancheta. Yung 1.67 is correct. Five, uh, 5.30 is correct, no? Okay. What value of alpha is required for this circuit to be valid? If you apply KCL here, Okay, KCL at that point. Sorry. <laughs> Let me apply KCL here. Okay, I'm going to get uh, 15 plus alpha VX is equal to zero. No? So alpha should be equal to minus Vx over 15. But what is Vx? What is Vx from here? From here, you see that Vx is minus 25, no? Notice that the polarity of the voltage source is opposite the polarity of Vx. So Vx is minus 25, right? So if I, if I substitute that here, I'm going to get alpha is equal to 25 minus, minus 25 over 15, which is equal to 5 thirds. So yung sumagot ng 1.67 or, or, or 5 thirds is correct. Hindi dapat negative, it should be positive. Okay, what about letter B? For the calculated value of alpha, find the power associated with the 25 volt source. What is the power associated with the 25 volt source? Anyone? <clears throat> okay, so I got some answers. I got 375. Is it 375? Is it positive or negative? So tama yung 375, no? Kasi actually, regardless, regardless of the value of alpha, no? the current that is flowing in this circuit for this circuit to be valid will be 15 amperes, right? So yung current dito is 15 amperes. So the power associated with the 25 volt source will be 15 times 25, right? So tama yung 375, but is it positive or negative? Anyone, positive or negative? Parang hula lang, ano? Positive or negative? Okay, most of you most of you got it wrong, no? It's positive, it's positive, okay? That is if you, if you follow the passive sign convention, okay? That is, these are your, this is your reference polarity. This is your reference direction of current. In this particular case, P is positive. No? Whenever, whenever the element is absorbing, so this is absorbing, no? this is absorbing power. The element is absorbing power. That's why the potential is the potential of the current, the potential uh, as the charges move, the potential goes from positive to negative. No, now, ng potential. 
because the element is absorbing power. Okay, so P is positive. In this particular case, itong 25 volt source is absorbing power. Right? So P should be positive. Okay, P should be positive. So mali, mali yung negative, ha? P should be positive. So sinabi ko na, it is absorbing, absorbing power. So the answer is a uh, five thirds, no? Malito. It should. It's not point six. It's uh, five thirds. Yeah. It's uh, this is five thirds. Mali yung notes, huh? Sorry, uh, that has to be corrected. And then that's uh, three hundred seventy-five watts, and then it is absorbing. Oops, sorry, sorry. Mali ito. Sorry. <laughs> the notes are correct. No? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I beg your indulgence. No, this is wrong. Let me erase this. Alpha is equal to minus 15 over Vx. So alpha is equal to three fifths. So tama yung, yung 0.6. So may sumagod bang 0.6 kanina? Uh, yung mga sumagot ng 0.6 kanina, you were correct, no? Um, I don't know if... I thought, oh, may, may sumagot, no? Uh, si Eric Gonzalez got it right, no? 0. 0.6. Okay, and it's positive. Please correct that, ano? Please make that correction. See, even I can make a mistake in transcription, no? Alpha is equal to 50, minus 15 over Vx. So, tama itong 0. 0.6. Okay, so some questions here. So for all absorbing power, it's always positive. That's convention, no? That's the convention we're following. Um, yeah, you can say that the source is delivering negative power. The convention we follow is, we say it's positive power if the element is absorbing, and therefore it follows this, it follows this uh, reference, okay? Uh, if Vx is, yes, that's right, no? Vx is negative. Vx is negative because if you take a look at the polarity of this Vx, it is opposite the polarity of the voltage source, right? Could the power be negative, but the power supply is delivering it? Uh, yes, actually, if the... <laughs> If the power is negative, it means the power supply is delivering it. In this case, the power is positive. That means the power supply is absorbing power. So tama yung sinabi mo, no? It, it is negative if the power supply is delivering power. But in this case, it is positive, meaning the power supply is absorbing power. What if we answer negative power and say it is delivering power? It's, that's wrong. It is, it is not delivering power. It's absorbing power. You don't, you don't have to look at any other part of the circuit. You just have to see this, ano? Ito lang, tignan lang nyo, no? This is minus plus 25 volts. And then you have a current flowing in this direction. So ito lang yung titignan nyo. No? That this part of the circuit. You don't even have to know what Vx is. So makita lang yung ganito, you already see that it is absorbing power. It is not delivering power. Okay. Okay, we still have, sorry, we still have two topics. So I'll, I'll, I'll speed it up a little, no? Voltage division. 
the total voltage across a group of resistors in series distributes to the individual resistors in proportion to resistor value, in proportion to resistor value. Let's say I had R1, R2, these are in series, no? And then I have a voltage here, V. This voltage will distribute to these two resistors in proportion to resistor value. So if, let's say if R1 is equal to R2, what is the relationship between V1 and V2? Let's say this is V1 and this is V2. They will be equal, that's right. No? Then V1 is equal to V2. What if R1 is equal to twice R2? What is the relationship between V1 and V2? If R1 is twice R2. Okay. V1 will also be equal to twice V2 because it distributes in proportion to resistance value. No? So kung R1, kung R1 is twice the value of R2, then V1 will be twice the value of V2. No? And therefore, what would be the, what would be the, how would that, uh, no, no, how would that distribute how would V distribute between R1 and R2? No? Therefore, V2 will be equal to one third of V and V1 will be equal to two thirds of V, right? So ang, ang mangyari, itong voltage na to, okay, one third of that will go here and then two thirds of that will go here. That will make a total of three thirds and V1 is equal to twice V2. Anyway, if you try to convert that into a formula, this is the formula you're going to get. No? Okay, V of i is equal to V multiplied by R of i over the sum of all Rs. Okay. So that is voltage division. Okay, let, I have a simple example here. A photocell is a variable resistor whose resistance is inversely proportional to incident light. The circuit shown was found to have the following values of V out under different lighting conditions. So this is, this is a photocell, okay? The resistance of the photocell varies inversely proportional to incident light. So habang lumalakas yung habang lumalakas yung ilaw, lumiliit yung resistance. So under three different lighting conditions, these were the values of V out that were computed. So what is the corresponding value of R for these three lighting conditions? So the answer is very easy, no? Um, using voltage using voltage divider V out is just equal to five volts. That is the voltage that's applied here. So pag nakita nyo to, ang, that is this voltage with respect to the ground. No? That is your reference. So equivalently, parang ganyan yan, no? That is the equivalent. So this is equal to five volts multiplied by 5.6K over 5.6K plus R. So this is your voltage divider formula. So all you have to do is solve for the value of R for these different output voltages. You just solve for the value of R and you're going to get the following answers. Okay. So uh, yeah, this is one zero zero four ohms. 7013 ohms, and this is 10042 ohms. There's a question, okay. So yun yung voltage divider. 
Current divider is quite similar, no? The total current across a group of resistors in parallel distributes to the individual resistors in proportion to conductance value. In proportion to conductance values, right? So if I have, again, no? if I have a current source I, let's say G1, G2, no? So G1 is conductance, no? And then this is I1, and this is I2. If G1 is equal to G2, then I1 will be equal to I2. If G1 is twice G2, then I1 will be twice I2, which will be equal to one third of, uh, sorry, which will be equal to two thirds of I, no? Because I2 will be equal to one third of I. That's the only that's the only way I can get I1 being equal to twice I2. You know? If I1 is two thirds of I and I2 is one third of I. You know? So that is the principle of current division. And then you have special case when there are two resistors in parallel. Okay, two resistors in parallel. So ito yon, R1 at R2. Then I1, the current flowing through this resistor will be equal to I multiplied by R2. No? R2 is the other resistance divided by the sum. And I2 will be I multiplied by R1. R1 would be the other resistor divided by the sum. Okay, so that's, that's the case when you have uh, two resistors in parallel. No? Uh, Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just go through this last, this last example. No? Um, I'll, I'll do it very quickly. An ammeter is an instrument that measures the current flowing through it. No? So a, a, an instrument that measures current is called an ammeter. This is a DC ammeter capable of measuring currents up to one MA. No? So this can measure it all, can measure Up to one MA. What what current is it measuring? This is the current that it is measuring. No, this is the current. The ammeter is measuring. Ito ha, ito ito yung current na sinusukat ng ammeter. Now. What I want to do is I want to increase the current that this can indicate. And to do that, I put a resistor, we call it a shunt resistor across the ammeter. Okay, in this particular case, what I want to do is I want 90% of I, so 0.9 I, to always flow through the shunt. So on the daan dito, is on always only 0.1, so dito 0.9 i, ito under daan dito will be 0.1 of i. So ang sinusukat lagi nito is just 10% of this particular current. Okay, so for that to happen, what should the value of R shunt be? No? If the ammeter is equivalent to a resistance that is 50 ohms. So what should the value of R shunt be? Okay, your 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 current uh, your current divider formula is I. Okay. Uh, let's call this I M. No, I M. That is the that is the current the ammeter is measuring. I M is equal to I multiplied by R S H over RSH plus 50 ohms, okay? But I M is only 0.1 of I. This current I M, itong current na dumadaan sa metro is only 0.1 of I because 0.9 is passing through RSH. So if you solve for this, 
the I cancels out and you're going to get RSH is equal to, and I think the answer is here. You know, um, yeah, you're going to get RSH is equal to 5.56 ohms. Okay, so if, if this is now the current being measured, we know that whatever this is reading will be one tenth of this, right? That means we can now measure 10 times what originally we could measure. No? So we can now measure 10 MA. Dati dati, we could only measure 1 MA. Again, natin itong shunt resistor so that only 0.1 or 10% per, uh, will pass through this. So in effect, we are multiplying the measuring capability 10 times. Okay. Let's see question. Yeah, uh, 556, somebody got it, no? 5.56 ohms. Okay, I'll stop first there, no? There's still one. There's still one problem here. Uh, there's an answer. Try it on your own. No. Okay, in this particular problem, just give you a hint how to solve it. Here, in this part, you use voltage divider. And then in this part, you use current divider. So that's how you solve this problem. No? This is an actual transistor amplifier problem. This is the equivalent circuit of a transistor amplifier. Now transistor amplifiers only work with varying voltage, uh, varying time varying voltages. No? That's why I noticed here that this is not capital. This is a small letter V sub I. This is small letter V sub O. These are time varying voltages. Um, we're dealing here with effective values. That's going to be defined later on. Ano ibig sabihin ng effective value? But you might think of an effective value as like a DC equivalent value. So you can actually solve this using uh, um, the techniques that we already studied. No? So try solving this. This is a voltage divider. This is a current divider. And the answer you get uh, should be this. No? values okay so I'll, I'll, I'll stop first there are there any questions any questions okay so if you have any questions anyway I'll, I'll, I'll post I'll post this again uh, I'll post the recording later on. If I have time tonight, I'll, I'll, it should be available already. Then if you have any questions, I'm just an email away. Okay. So that's it for today. We'll continue with uh, circuit analysis techniques uh, on Thursday. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Boozer. Thank you, thank you. Thank uh, you're sir. welcome. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay.